Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me. Rob Biddulph. Now, I'm a children's author and an illustrator. Maybe you've seen this book of mine. It's called Show and Tell. There's my name at the top. A delightful tale, says the Times. <laughs> Who am I to argue? This story is all about a class full of children. Hang on, let's see if I can get this a nice drawing I did. Look. It's all about a class full of children, class 2L, and they bring in different things for show and tell at school. Look, Adam there, he brings in a sunflower seed. Betty says, oh, that's so boring. Look, I've got some bright blue spaghetti. We've got pirate ship hats, gold violins, and look, you can see they progressively get more and more crazy. We've got the speediest car in existence. Look, Rebecca here's got a pet alligator. Thea's brought in the Queen of Denmark. That's pretty amazing. And then look, Violet appears with Big Ben on her back. And that's as far as I'm going to go because it gets even crazier, trust me. I like that story. It's a fun one. Maybe you have seen my chapter books. Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City uh, is the first one in the series. And it's all about a girl who finds um, a magic pencil. Uh, she realises whatever she draws with this pencil becomes real. And then she... She, she draws a door which leads to an illustrated world and she has all sorts of adventures in this illustrated world she's trying to find her missing dad I'm super super proud of the Peanut Jones stories but we are here today to draw a picture together like we always do and today we are going to be drawing a zebra now I love zebras obviously one of the most beautiful animals in the whole wide world look this is the draw with rob amazing animals book right and i've got this spread here which i really like it's called it's a wild world and it's sort of got a map of the world um with lots of with like an animal in sort of hang on learn to speak rob learn to speak <sighs> it's got animals in those areas of the world oh my gosh how do i say this right so in each country <laughs> not in every country but in lots of these countries there is an animal which lives in that country and look here number 32 is a zebra which lives on the savannas of africa and zebras aren't they the most beautiful animals ever so i thought it'd be a really really good idea idea to show i'm not very good at talking today am i what's going on i thought it would be a good idea to show you how to draw a very cute zebra character now there's another reason why i want to draw a zebra because a zebra is also used as a mascot by people with a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS for short and I have been told all about this particular syndrome by my friends at the Ehlers-Danlos support group here we go here's their logo um, and they use as I said they use a zebra as their mascot now I'm going to tell you a little bit about this syndrome because there's all different types of it um, and there's something also called HSD which is nearly the same um, but what this syndrome does is it changes some parts of the body that you can't see okay so in people that have EDS um, it's difficult to explain but there are some bits of the body that are held together in a different way and it, what it what it does it can make doing sort of everyday things like walking or getting dressed writing that sort of thing can make it it can make it really painful and difficult okay and some people with EDS they might look a bit different too they might have bruised or scarred skin that kind of thing um, and, it, and it can sometimes it can be difficult for people with EDS or HSD to get the help that they need so I think it's very important to tell more people about these syndromes which is why I'm delighted to tell all of you guys about it in today's video and it all ties in very nicely with the zebra mascot that they use. Um, so if you are, if you want to know more about this syndrome, you want to kind of help in any way that you can, if you visit this website here, so elos-danlos.org, you can learn much, much more about it. But I'm delighted um, to be talking about them with you today. And I'm delighted to be showing you all how to draw a zebra, particularly as it's their mascot. Right, shall we get on with our drawing? In case you haven't watched one of these videos before, this is how it works. There are people, believe it or not, who don't think they're very good at drawing. And I say, well, who says what's good and what's bad with drawing? You know, it's subjective, right? Drawing, it's not like maths. Everyone can draw. You know, some people's drawings might look a bit more like what your idea of a good drawing is, but that's not necessarily the same as somebody else's idea of what a good drawing is, okay? 
everyone can draw some people do they might just need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in which is where I come in okay because I can help you with that because what we're going to do in our drawing today we're going to break the drawing of a zebra down into little tiny bite-sized pieces and what I mean by that is I'm going to draw a shape or a line on my piece of paper here then I'm going to stop for a second you can pause the video and I want you to then draw what I draw then I will draw a little bit more then you will copy what I do then I'll draw more you will draw I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw and pretty soon we'll end up with a drawing of a very cute zebra that we are super proud of okay so we're doing it in bite-sized pieces that when they come together they make up the whole drawing okay what you're gonna need is a piece of paper you're gonna need a pen or a pencil maybe something to color with a bit later all those zebras are black and white so you don't need many colors do you unless you want to do a pink and yellow striped zebra which I'm all for quite frankly you go for it but let's start then shall we and the first thing I want you to do okay we're gonna draw I'm gonna do this zebra I'm gonna do a very cute zebra almost like a kawaii type zebra we have drawn a unicorn before we've drawn a horse before I think as well I think we've even drawn an alicorn which is like a winged unicorn um, and I think when I did the unicorn I did it in a similar way to how I'm gonna show you how to draw this zebra so we're gonna do the zebra sitting down facing us with its little feet sticking out towards the camera okay and so to that end the first thing that I want you guys to do is like a rectangle quite a big rectangle let me think I'm gonna go from about here my rectangle is gonna have slightly curvy corners and I think I'm gonna make it slightly wider at the top than the bottom too so we're gonna come up and around like that then we're gonna head back down and curve around there okay so do you see what I mean? A rectangle with sort of a rounded quality to it, like that. Now I'm using a brush pen here. Lots of people ask me about my pens. This is a Japanese brush pen made by a company called Kirataki. And I really, really like these pens. The reason I like them is you can see my line, it's like, it's not very even. It's all kind of even, it sort of even breaks up in places where the brush, the bristles of the brush have spread out. And I really like that. I really like it when a line has different thicknesses and different qualities. I just think it adds personality to your drawing. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I always go on about how things don't have to be perfect. In fact, we don't want them to be perfect. I like it when things are slightly wonky because it helps to add a lot of character to your drawing. And also, if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, please don't worry, just keep on drawing, okay? You're not meant to be drawing a picture exactly like mine. You're meant to be doing your own drawing. Right. Let's go up and do our zebra's ears. So this is gonna be our zebra's head, okay? So the ears we're gonna do in the top right and the top left hand uh, corners of this rectangle. What I want you to do, we're gonna come up and out and we're gonna draw a kind of leaf shape. So it's quite kind of curvy and it goes to a very kind of narrow bottom like that. So like a leaf. We'll do the same on the other side, but a mirror image. So it comes up and around, goes to a point, and then goes back down to a nice narrow base. And there we go, they are our zebra's ears. Let's just draw a smaller leaf shape inside, like so. Just for the inside part of the ear, the lining, I always call it, don't I? Right, that is the top part of our zebra's head, the ears. Let's add a little tuft of hair. Now this is a fun bit, because what I want you to do, just do lots of lines coming out from a central point like that. So sort of like a big spider with lots more legs than spiders have. And we'll just make it a bit kind of thicker in the middle. So it just becomes sort of a round spiky ball. And that acts as a really nice tuft of black hair at the top of our zebra's head. Okay. The next thing I want you to do, we're gonna come down, now zebras, obviously zebras are the most beautifully patterned creatures. Um, and we're gonna draw some stripes on our zebra's face, but I'm gonna not just do random stripes. I'm gonna kind of try and organize it a bit. And that organization is gonna come from drawing our zebra's nose. You'll see what I mean. What I want you to do, I want you to come up from the bottom on the right hand side like this then we're going to curve around start heading inwards and then curve towards the top like that then we're going to go horizontally just half a centimeter 
and we're going to mirror that. We're going to go down and around like that. So it looks like a kind of vase that you might put a flower in, something like, like that. And then in two, these two areas here, we're going to draw two circles like that. And inside each one, we're going to draw another circle, just a little bit small, smaller. And we're going to color those two circles in. So it looks like we've drawn eyes down towards the bottom of our zebra's head. But you know what? We haven't. They're going to be our zebra's nostrils. And what we do, we then color in the bars <laughs> around those circles. And what we've done, instead of drawing eyes, they will suddenly just start to look like white circles within the blackness of our zebra's nose. And it just, it's just a nice way to draw our zebra's nostrils. See, once I've finished colouring it, you'll see what I mean. There we go. You see what I mean? Two nostrils. Easy peasy. Right, let's give our zebra some eyes, shall we? Um, let me think. Right, let's do the eyes. We'll do them up towards the top of our zebra's head. We're going to give this zebra quite nice big eyes. So about that sort of size. And we're going to draw them right against the side of our zebra's head, like that. Okay, one there, let's do the other one over here. Try and get them roughly the same size. Remember what I said though, nobody's perfect, as you can see. <laughs> I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this. Why do we say pig's ear? What's so bad about pig's ears? And if we do something rubbish, we say, oh, we've made a right pig's ear of that. I think pigs have got lovely ears. It's a strange saying, isn't it? Right, there we go. Two lovely big zebra eyes. Let's add the pupils. Tell you what, should we do a little shiny bit on these ones? To do the shiny bit, you add a, another circle inside that one and just colour around it. And it makes the eye a little bit shiny. So easy, so effective. Little circle up there, colouring around it. There we go. And we're going to give our zebra eyelashes. Now I think zebras have got lovely big eyelashes. So we're going to put ours out to the side, like that. I've just done four on each eye. Like so. Okay, it's official. This is quite a cute drawing already. It's a cute drawing. Right, now's the point when we're going to start to add our zebra's signature stripes. Now, if you look at a zebra, they've got beautiful patterning, really, really beautiful patterning. Lots of people, they, they sort of, they wonder whether a zebra is white with black stripes or black with white stripes. And it's kind of like the eternal argument, isn't it? It's a bit like which came first, the chicken or the egg. But you know what? There is a definitive answer because I looked it up before I did this video. If you were to shave a zebra, <laughs> right? Shave all of their fur off, they would be jet black all over. So what that means is a zebra is black with white stripes. You heard it here first people. You are very welcome. You are very welcome. So that being said, a zebra started off white and we're going to add black stripes to it. So it really was pointless me saying that. But in real life zebras are black with white stripes. So what I want you to do, as I said, the, the basis for our stripey pattern is going to be this funny vase shape that we drew for our zebra's nose. And you'll see what I mean. What I want you to do, I want you to carry on up here. So follow that nose of that, the, the sort of, the, sorry, the uh, opening of our vase. Carry it up, carry it on up into the eye, into both eyes, in fact, on both sides. So not too thick, like that. And it's gonna go up into the eye. Imagine it goes through the eye and towards the ear, like that. And these stripes are gonna get slightly thicker as we go up okay so it gets slightly thicker and you can do that here as well just make it slight so it's almost like coming down to a point by the time that it touches the nose and they're the first two of our zebra stripes then what we're going to do in the middle of that we're going to do one stripe going straight down the middle of the eyes and coming to a point at the bottom like that so here we go it disappears into that tuft of hair. So it's going to go right to a point and we're not going to quite touch. I'm just going to take it down like so. Now you can make your stripes a bit thicker if 
you want. So I'm going to make it so it's roughly the same thickness there. So we get a nice even distribution of stripiness. Okay, so there's the first two stripes. Then what I want you to do, we're going to carry on this stripy pattern. So we're going to do another stripe that comes to a point that goes straight through the middle of the eye, back up through there. Let's do the same on the other side. Back up through there. Coming to a point. Always very symmetrical, these zebra stripes. Then we're going to do, this one's going to come a bit lower down. We've got a bit more space to play with. So we're going to come down there. Again, we're coming to a point. This is going to go out like that. Down here. Out we go. Lovely pointy bit. And I think we've just got room for one more stripe on each side. So we'll come down a bit lower again. Again, we're going to a lovely point, like so. And there we go. Suddenly, we have a zebra. Isn't that lovely? I really like this guy or this girl. I'm not sure what my zebra is, whether it's male or female. But there we go. I'm going to just tidy up that, make my ear nice and pointy up there. But that is our zebra's head finished. Now, do you remember I said earlier, I'm going to do our zebra sitting down, facing towards us with his feet pointing towards the camera, the bottom of his hooves or her hooves pointing towards the camera. Now, we did exactly this for our unicorn video. So we're going to follow the same practice. What I want you to do down to the right of our zebra we're going to draw, well, we're going to start to draw like a circle. It's going to go very close to the bottom right of our zebra's head. But when we get to about here, uh, so what's that? Just about, about midday on a clock actually. I'm going to come down in a deep V shape like that before I carry on the circle. So it looks a bit like a cake from above with a slice cut out of it. Okay. We're going to do exactly the same here. So try and make your circles the same size. Because that little cut bit is, you know, like if you look at a horse's hoof or a zebra's hoof, it's sort of like they have two toes like that. But it, I mean, we simplify. Whenever we do draw cartoons like this, we always simplify everything. So this is a very simplified version of a zebra's hoof. So then what we do, we color that in black because their hooves are black, like so. And I want you to imagine that these are our zebra's feet facing out. This zebra is sitting down with his feet facing out towards us. And this is the bottom of our zebra's hooves. Okay. Trust me, it will make sense. It's going to look very cute. There we go. The two zebra's hooves. Now we're going to draw our zebra's front legs. So these are the two back legs that are kind of sitting forward. And the two front legs... What we're going to do, we're going to do one line coming down there and one line coming down there, right next to those two shapes that we just drew. But they're going to stop before we get to the bottom. And then we're going to add on two hooves, but from a different angle this time. We're going to come out slightly at an angle, then a tiny little line, then another one of those V shapes, like that. And then we carry on around. And we go up and across. So we made a shape like that with a V kind of cut out of it. Then from that we go back up and that is going to be one of our zebra's front legs. We we'll do exactly the same but a mirror image on this side. So you come around, that goes in, the V shape gets cut out and there we go. Another little zebra hoof. So they're the two front legs. These are the two rear feet. What we need to do now, we just need to draw a little line behind the front legs that goes across, which just kind of links that up. And then we just draw little curvy lines there, which are like the back part of our zebra's legs. Do you see? It's kind of taken shape, isn't it? The next thing I want you to do, we're gonna add the rear part of our zebra's mane. So this is the first bit, the little tuft of hair. So what we do, we just add these little pointy bits just behind 
And that just suggests our zebra's mane coming down behind him or her. Just like that. Towards that part there. And then what we do next, we're going to add some stripes on the zebra's front legs. I'm going to add four, pretty evenly spaced, going horizontally across the legs, like so. And we're pretty much there. We could add, oh, do you know what? No, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to change the angle of that slightly. I'm going to make that a bit, a bit more like that. And I'm not going to add any stripes there because I think it would just confuse things. But I am going to help a little bit with the shading so it sort of links together. The last part of this drawing is our zebra's tail. And we're going to do the tail coming the, the back of our zebra's bottom, kind of sitting down our zebra, isn't it? It's back here. So the tail will be coming out. Oh, what have I dropped? I dropped my pen lid. Hang on. Wait a second, reader. Viewer, not reader. Got it. There it is. Found it. Don't panic everybody right now we're gonna draw the tail so we do a little wiggly line like so coming out the back and then on the end a little tuft of black fur like that almost like a little kind of flame shape you can do this however you want I'll do mine like that color that in black and of course, let's make it nice and stripy. And there we go. There is our cute kawaii zebra character. What do you think? Pretty nice, huh? Pretty nice. Now I am gonna color in uh, my little zebra. As I said earlier, they are black and white. <laughs> But you can do yours any colour you like, obviously. Uh, you could have even, if you wanted, I should, probably should have said, you didn't have to do your stripes in black. You could have done them bright pink or something. Um, but that's up to you. You can do it however you want. I am going to do a bit of colouring. I might give my zebra some little coloured eyes and make colour in this little bit here, up towards, um, up in the middle of our zebra's ear. And I'll add a little bit of shading here and there and sort of show you what I mean. And I might do a bit of grass in the background. Whatever I do, I'm going to do it in super speed mode, so I will see you back here in about 20 seconds. You ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, there is my coloured in zebra. It's actually turned out pretty colourful, even though I said it was just going to be black and white. I made the eyes, as I said, I would, made them nice and green, added the pink in the inside bits of the ear, and then I've added quite a lot of grey and silver and even a little bit of kind of blue here, just to, just in this kind of shadowy areas, just to add a little bit of interest. And it's weird, isn't it? Because there's quite a lot of colour in this drawing, but the zebra still looks black and white. And that's that's the thing. There's very few things in life that are at, that are actually just white or just black. If you really, really look, you will see other colours in there, little bits of blue or pinks, that kind of thing. Um, and then I've set the whole thing off with this nice green long grass because that's why they're stripy, you know, zebras because it sort of acts as a camouflage in the tall in the tall grasses when they're over there on the uh, the savannas of Africa. It helps them sort of hide from. Uh, they're predators, the people who might want to eat them. And so those stripes kind of mix in with the grasses. So I've added some nice long green grass here just to match the eyes. And you can see you just get a little link between the greens there, which makes your whole picture look nice and harmonious. Right, I need to sign my drawing, don't I? I'm just gonna sign it down here. We'll do a little rob like that. Make sure you sign yours so that everybody knows who has created this wonderful work of art. Um, and yes, there we go. The zebra, the mascot of the EDS um, uh, support group, um, which I really, really hope you'll go to this website. I'm gonna put it up again now. There we go, ellasdanlos.org. Um, so you can learn more about the disease and, has, and find out how you can help to support them. Um, and I am delighted to be drawing this uh, in honor of those guys. Um, 
I want to see your drawings, so can you please post them on social media using this hashtag, Draw with Rob. If you're watching on Facebook, just put a picture in the comments, that way I'll get to see it. And I can't wait to see your drawings. Um, I just know you're going to have done a brilliant job of this particularly cute zebra. Um, what else? Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, YouTube, make sure you are subscribed to my channel with your notifications turned on. That way you'll get told when a new video comes out. Similarly, uh, why don't you subscribe to my newsletter? It's totally free. Just go to this address here on my website and sign up and then you will get a little email telling you when I'm going on tour or when a new book's coming out or when a new video's coming out, that sort of thing. Why not do it? You've got nothing to lose. You might as well do it. It's the best way to know when I've got new stuff coming out. And that's it. I have nothing else to tell you. <laughs> I really, really hope you've enjoyed drawing this zebra with me. I've really loved showing you how to do him. I'm going to be back very soon with a brand new episode of Draw With Rob. Until then, everybody, keep those pencils sharpened. Keep safe. Be kind to everybody. And I will see you very soon. Bye, everyone. everyone just when you thought you got rid of me here I am again popping up at the end of your video to annoy you <laughs> and I'm here today to tell you all about this the brand new draw with Rob activity book and it's called amazing animals and that's because it's full of loads of amazing animals it's true it really is we've got little ones like this guy here we have got whew, some really big ones we have got animals that live in the sea. We have got animals that spend most of their time up in the sky. And of course, there's loads and loads of really, really cute ones. <laughs> um, what's in the book, I hear you ask? Well, we have got loads and loads of really cool and quite tricky puzzles for you to do. Uh, we've got some pages where I start the drawings off and you guys get to finish them. We have got lots of really, really nice colouring pages for you to do too. And of course, it wouldn't be a Draw With Rob book without lots of exclusive, never before seen draw alongs. And I've got the frames as per usual for you to put the pictures in. And of course, all the pages are perforated. So once you've done your beautiful works of art, you can tear them out and stick them up on the wall and display them for all to see. And then when you get to the end of your book, look, We've got a really cool certificate. You put your name in there and it says, this is to certify that your name is officially an amazing animal artist. Isn't that cool? The book is out right now. You can get it right now from wherever you get your books, be it online or from your local bookshop, local bookshop, if you can, please. It was so much fun to put this book together. I really, really loved doing it. I really, really hope you love the book too. I think if you like these videos, I think you're going to love this book, to be honest. So get yourself a copy. If you do, let me know what you think of it. Right, I better let you go. You've got to get on with your day, haven't you? I'm going to be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, everybody, keep those pencils sharpened, keep on drawing, keep on reading, and take care. Bye-bye.